Hi folks, welcome to the Man Cave. Hope everybody is keeping well. So three or four weeks ago, I purchased a used 2020 Triumph Speed Twin, as we can see here. And then since I purchased it, I've been on the old internet looking for accessories to buy, to then put on the bike. So if you want to click on the playlist up here somewhere, that will take you to a set of videos on all the accessories that I've now fitted on the Triumph Speed Twin. So what are we doing today? Well, today we are looking at replacing the clock dials on the Triumph. I just found them to be a little bit fussy. So sometimes it's quite hard to actually read the speedo and the rev counter. So sometimes less is more. And in this case, that's what we're doing, less is more. So I've actually purchased a set of new replacement clock dials from an Italian manufacturer called Artem Works. And I'll put a link in the description down below so go and check it out quite a few people have actually fitted these to their speed twins to their thruxtons that kind of thing so these clocks fit other bikes as well so go and check them out uh, sadly it's not a cheap replacement these cost me delivered around about 96 euros so yeah they are a little bit pricey but i think they're really good quality and I really like the look of them. So that's what we're going to do today is fit these new clock dials from Artem Works all the way from Italy. So without further ado, let's crack on. So inside the fancy red packaging all the way from Italy from Artem Works, we have two dials. We have the speedo in miles per hour on the outside and there's a kilometer per hour on the inside. And then we have the rev counter, which has got the rev limiter set to about 7,000 RPM, which is basically what the Speed Twin is set to as well. We have a very comprehensive set of destructions, so we're gonna be following these very soon. And the whole thing sort of uh, is, yeah, nicely put together actually, as I would expect for about 96 euros for basically two bits of plastic, but they are very high quality, nicely put together bits of plastic. So let's see how we put these bits of plastic using the destructions onto the Speed Twin. So the first thing we've got to do is disconnect the bike's battery. So we're going to remove the black negative cable first, followed by the red positive cable next. So I'm just going to use a 10 mil spanner just to undo the nut on the negative battery terminal but be careful not to get the spanner onto the frame because you might cause a bit of a short so once that's undone we will then use a screwdriver to take the nut out and then do the same for the other side and that's the battery disconnected as we need to take the clocks off to put the new dials in just to get easier access to the screws on the underside of the clocks i've just undone the two bolts either side of the headlamp with a 12 mil socket put a towel on the top of the mud guard and then we'll lower the headlamp onto the towel like that what we need to now do is remove these four three millimeter allen key screws and then remove this cover which gives us access to the electrical connector on the underside here so that's the fourth screw just remove the fourth screw not sure if the cover is going to fall off and just move it down and there we go that's the cover removed next thing we have to do is remove the weatherproof boot that gives us access to the electrical connection and pressing the tab here and then it should just slide out there we go and that is all disconnected now and all we need to do is remove the clocks from the mounting l-shaped bracket here and we need to undo one two three torx t20s and that's the third and final one so everything's now disconnected so these clocks should just lift up from the l-shaped bracket voila so we just laid the clocks down on a nice clean cloth so the 10 screws you actually have to remove they're all the same size so here we are there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and the others you can leave in and that is as per the diagram so turn the clocks over what you need to do is just hold the bottom and then just lift up gently and then remove the glass away from the dials and what they do send the notes is do not touch the inside of the glass here on the underside because it has been treated with some special protection so keep it somewhere safe and don't touch it what you'll also notice if you 
have a quick look down here is there is a rubber gasket a waterproof gasket i guess it is so when you do lift the clocks up if some of it comes away just with a small flat bladed screw, screwdriver just pop it back into the channel here so now comes the delicate part of the surgery so i'm just going to put some kitchen towel under the dial under here and then with a set of spoons apparently all you need to do is pop them under here and carefully lift upwards and all the videos i've seen the needle just does spring off and there we go and that's what it looks like so you've got to be very delicate with it and then exactly the same for the second one oh that's what happens in some of the other youtube videos it just pops off so what we need to do now is remove both of the discs and they do use a little bit of adhesive on the underside so what they say is just lift them up a little bit it does say you sort of prize something under there so it says carefully and slowly remove the stickers that hold the discs to their base so i'm doing that really carefully so you can feel and hear the adhesive so this is a delicate operation if you want to reuse these again so I think that's all the adhesive off and then you just have to twist it anti-clockwise because you can see where the white tabs are sort of locking tabs. And then so we should rotate it a little bit, get it over the mark here. There we go. And that should come away. There we go. That's one disc removed. And the same for the other side. Says he, there we go. That's two discs removed. So in the kit from Art and Works, you also get two adapters. They are different sizes, one for the right and one for the left. And then we just pop those in the holes. So now comes the fun part, putting the new dials into the clock. So I'm actually gonna put some rubber gloves on them, no matter how much you clean your hands you still may get some grease on them. So just avoid any grease spots on the new dials, put some gloves on. And then we've got two recesses in the disc there, which you can see, and they align with the ones on the dials, on the clocks. So just push those in and then that's level. And it's gonna be a little bit of a twist. There we go, that's now on properly. And the same for the rev counter to lock them in. There we go. And just line them up with a little recess here. And that all looks good. Happy with that. Next and then very carefully, we just have to push the needles back onto the mounting pin, but only by a couple of millimeters. So again, very carefully, try not to break anything. There's one. There's two. And then what we have to do then is just move the pointers so they're aligned with their respective zeros. There's one. And there's two. And then finally, we can just push the pointers down further, making sure they're still aligned with zero. And making sure they can still rotate freely. Right, so I'm now happy with the position of the needles. They can rotate freely, so I'm just gonna put them back to zero. So they're on properly, they're back at zero. So let's put this back on there very carefully, making sure we don't damage the waterproof gasket. And then turn it over and then put those 10 screws back. So this is the 10th and final screw. Don't go crazy when you're screwing them back in. You can actually feel 
the screws tightening down onto the gasket so yeah don't go crazy just enough to snug it up yeah but don't go mad with it and there we go that is all the 10 screws back in and if we turn it over that's what we've now got i think that looks better than those definitely yep sometimes less is more so before we put everything back and then connect the battery i want to make sure that the clocks do actually do what they need to do so let's just put them back onto the l-shaped bracket plug the electrical connector in so connecting the battery positive first and then negative last so that is the negative terminal now connected i'll nip them up later on with that terminal spanner but let's just turn the power on and see what the needles do Folks, this is the moment of truth. Have I done it properly? Let's have a look. Well, they seem to work all right. Although that's not down at zero, so I might have to take the screws out and just redo that. So that's why we do it. But folks, this is where I'm gonna interrupt the video. So as you can see, when I switched the ignition on, the pointer on the miles per hour went from zero, did it sweep, and then it went through zero to about minus five miles an hour. So basically what I did when I set the pointer at zero to start with, what I should have done was with my finger, just smoothly push the pointer, move the pointer around another 360 degrees. So you're gonna feel the resistance against the pointer motor, and the pointer is gonna be just spinning on the top of the pointer shaft. So with your finger, just go through the zero mark all the way around anti-clockwise and then reposition position it to zero. That way you know that the motor is zeroed and the pointer is at zero as well. And that will avoid the needles going, doing their sweep and then going to a negative value. And I hope that makes sense. And I'll show you that I have sorted that out as we can see here. I've actually, with my finger, I went all the way back around again anti-clockwise. You could feel the resistance as you've forced in effect the needle back round to zero and then what we can do is put the ignition back on it will do a sweep and then it's gone back to zero there we go anyway on with the video so for the second time i have refitted the 10 screws into the back of the clock so everything looks good the dials are still at zero and then what we're going to do is just put everything back in reverse order the art and works information leaflet actually tells you the torque settings they're quite low i haven't got a torque wrench that goes that low so i'm just going to sort of nip them up as best i see fit so we're going to put the clocks back on to the l-shaped bracket plug the electrical connector in put the cover on put the headlamp unit on secure that and then connect the battery and then turn the ignition on and that should be good to go so everything in reverse order So that's everything tightened up on the front. The torque settings for the headlight bolts, I'm not sure what they are. If I find out, I'll put them on the screen up here. Obviously, if you're gonna go and do a bit of night riding, this headlight unit might not be at the correct, correct adjustment. So uh, take a spanner with you and adjust accordingly when you go and have one of your nighttime rides. So that's everything done on the front. Just gotta reconnect the battery and jobs are good. So just connecting the battery now and obviously it's the positive lead first. So everything's now connected, let's turn the ignition on. Needles do their thing, all the idiot lights come on so everything's working. I'm gonna start the bike. Indicator lights. Yeah, everything works. High beam. Yep, so everything works, that's a good job. So that's it, we've come to the end of the installation video of the replacement clock dials from 
Arton Works. If you're looking at getting a set of these installation wise, it's going to take you between 45 minutes and one hour. And they do provide you with a comprehensive set of instructions. So just take your time and follow them and you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. So why did I go for the replacement clock dials? Well, basically I just found the original ones just to be a little bit too fussy and sometimes less is more. And in this case with those replacement clock dials, less certainly is more so i find them really nice other people might not each to their own anyway i hope you found the installation video of some use to yourselves if you've got any comments to make put them in the comment section down below i'll put all the links where you can get them from down below as well so as ever ride safe and we'll see you again soon in the next video cheerio for now well i couldn't really finish the video without taking the bike out for a run and giving the clocks a bit of a trial run so what I will say is, I think these clocks look absolutely superb. I really, really impressed them. Very retro, very classic styling, very simple. And more importantly, they are really easy to read and get the information from them. There is only one downside to them that I've noticed already. And in bright sunlight, full sunlight we're talking about, is you simply cannot see the warning lights coming through the dial. So that is really the only negative other than that, I really like them. So, as ever, ride safe. See you again soon. Take care for now. Cheerio.